So uh, I just want to brief about the AI and uh, the current role that we are doing it and little bit of the things that we are doing in vision. So uh, basically uh, the thing is that now AI is becoming the precision medicine and uh, the precision part of uh, radiology and because of that we will able to practice the precision medicine. So it will involve say various terminologies like radio mix, artificial intelligence, the big data all will have an improved value and efficiency and we are very early uh, in these scenarios. So basically from a generic characterization uh, by a group of radiologists now with the help of AI there could be an actionable phenotypic characterization that was difficult on uh, the phenotypic features that we are seeing in already on the console and uh, only an isolated image interpretation with a limited experience it can be uh, the data generated from the thousands of scans it will give an relevant actionable uh, information so basically to do that uh, we required a really very well annotated data and that can make a change in the future that is coming up so basically to uh, run the medical services uh, we need have improved value and at the same time there is a demand from the society that the cost has to be reduced and the productivity has to be improved and the balance that is required it could be possible uh, when we utilize both human and machines and they work in a collaboration to make this precision medicine uh, feasible. So we are uh, typically following this hype curve like in every technology and the hype curve will tell that we try to overestimate the effect of uh, any technology in particular uh, in this lecture it will be AI in the short run but we underestimate the effect in the long run. So we start with a lot, lot of enthusiasm and expectations that it will be the uh, answer of everything and then we will face hurdles and then we realize that uh, more things has to be done and then we try to learn the concepts of machine learning, what is the natural rigorous processing and then we thought it is not working fine and then gradually it is adopted by the society and then it, the true consumption value will come after some time. So AI, uh, it is a uh, thing that is related to the computer science and where we are not pre-programming uh, something and the program is done by the computer itself, the algorithm are done by the computer itself through their neural networks and the method that is they are doing it is hidden to us in many layers. So that is called as AI and it could be a supervised learning, it could be an unsupervised learning or it could be reinforced learning like in this particular picture if you see uh, that uh, we have provided it will try to annotate that this particular person is going to be this. So that is because of the AI. So uh, it will the will not have any uh, facial recognitions, it will have coordinates, the time zones that is taken, your uh, analysis of the uh, friends that are there into your group and then you will try to tag them and uh, supervise them. So th this could happen, yes you have correctly labeled this but this person is particularly wrong so it could be supervised in that manner and that's simply happening in our mail system as well. So the AI is there since very long time, uh, earlier uh, only the machine learning that was there in the uh, auto learns and that is the traditional programming paradigm in which we are designing that this particular nodule uh, because of the speculations or because of necrosis or because of tethering looking like a malignant one and if it is something which is mimicking like this it has to be labeled as malignancy. So this is there but AI has a different way of learning in which there is no human interaction in between what is the interaction that is only the machines that are doing it and they are taking their own classification uh, based on the data that is available and they are learning itself. You can supervise them uh, that uh, to give a good annotated data. So that is the basically fundamental behind the deep learning. It could be helpful in future for classification uh, of the various lesions. You can localize the lesions and you can segment them into various subgroups and it will be helpful in filtration and registrations. So if we try to take the data that is typically available from the radio mix it can tell whether the mutations that we are seeing into the lung cancer whether they are EGFR or it is having ALK or ROS mutations if it is EGFR whether we can subclassify them the data that is available to us and can we combine the radiology data with an clinical data or the pathological data that is available to us and can make things happen uh, in future regarding the precision medicine for that particular patient. So there are many challenges uh, the challenges would be that how we annotate these data, how we validate these data and there are so many gaps 
that are there, how the training is done, whether the training was done is sufficient or not, whether there is a diversity of the cases and can we generalize these things. So in, uh, I just try to enumerate this, there is a graph on the left side which will tell that there are randomly allocated data and uh, this graph will tell that there is a lot of errors that it is showing it and this may be uh, looking like not a truly fitted graph but it may be more generalizable graph. In this particular set you will see that every node has to be connected and this looks to be a very precise and very perfect graph but that is not a generalizable case. So it might be produced in one laboratory but the application when we apply it, it might be like this only. So that, that's why, uh, so the thing is that uh, what we are talking about that in particular this patients uh, you will see that there is a lot of groundless densities that are there because of the heat map it will try to pick up these findings which has been predefined and pre-designed and then it will tell that there is a consolidation in that particular area. So the confidence interval it is giving is 99% and there is no other abnormality that is there uh, that, that we have labeled. But sometimes uh, the AI can hit the hurdle and then you will see that uh, there is a bilateral uh, ground glass uh, opacities that are there, there is some consolidation, it is picking up the consolidation, it is falsely picking up the pneumothorax, that was not the case. But these are the data which has analyzed them into CT scan. So they might uh, be good as compared to the radiologist in reading the x-rays, but they might be not good in picking up the findings that are there on the CT. So if you want the results like CT, we have to train the data on the CT scans. So humans and with machines will have different weaknesses and strength. And though there is a lot of uh, fuss about whether it, the AI will replace the physicians, in real terms it is going to help physicians if we do. Uh, so if you see that, the lung cancers can be very heterogeneous and if you see that there are multiple metastases that are going to do. So we can just label that it is going to be in metastasis and whether they have decreased or increased in an oversimplified resis that we are doing it. But can we label these metastases which has progressed and which has responded uh, in particular or whether those who have responded have different mutations than those who have progressed. So that will be the real use of AI in the future that is coming up. So we have uh, done uh, uh, some studies like Dr. Abhishek has done on radiomics and radiogenomics in brain metastasis where can we predict a biomarker of, uh, in brain metastasis regarding the EGFR status. So a lot of uh, things has to be done uh, and we have to join the startup system uh, to work in an orchestration manner to uh, the advanced workflow that we are doing it and uh, the TMC Biobank project that we are doing it uh, with the credible in our institution. So there are a lot of issues regarding the security and the privacy and if we don't consider the privacy then these kind of things and these kind of uh, things will occur into the future. So Google and University of Chicago were sued of the data sharing where the patient's name, the doctor's name and other data are shared and uh, there are a lot of litigation over this issue. So that can be minimized because of the federated or distributed learning where the algorithm itself can be placed in the institution and then we can use the data uh, and de-annotate the data and then we can analyze the data into the central server. So uh, the suggestion is that AI will be extremely useful and uh, if it is appropriately consumed there is a, a head strategy that has to be prepared and lot of IT infrastructure that is required uh, and especially from the re-engineering of existing and failure systems and there has to be need for deep integration with the workflows. The goal has to be data optimization uh, and picking meaningful cases that we can uh, 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 do the precision medicines and we have to stay engaged. Thank you so much. Uh, over to you Nivedita.